Hi and welcome to Excel VBA data entry form with search and update function. Let me show you guys how this works. Right here, let's start with the spin button. We can navigate using the spin button. Okay. We can print if we intend to do that click on print I've selected the digital one I'm gonna save it straight on my desktop and there we go that's my PDF format because I don't have a printer on my system just close that and we can decide to enter new data or even search let's search for any data in here let's look for yeah let's look for seven seven two three four and search for that particular customer oh yeah there we go that's it tommy lee jones okay and let's search for someone else let's just go for maybe one nine zero zero d Hit the search button there we go that's larry roy okay we can exit if we want which i don't intend to now and uh, we can even reset so let's reset all before we reset let me show you guys one thing if i double click on any of this let's double click on dynamic hunter there we go dynamic hunter we should be able to spot that right here look at it dynamic hunter is officially selected on your on your worksheet or oh, let's double click on any other one let's say 14 2 that's 14 journey there okay let's select Paul Parker there we go that's Paul Parker Tony Park okay and let's see Tony Montana and so on that's how the double clicking of the list box works now let's reset click on reset you see the reset actually wipe out all of the information there wiped out all of the selection we can now come in here let's enter new reference number i'm just going to call that 7799 and the name is danny there's a danny boy okay address let's call that jensen main road right telephone number date registration date and form of identification um annual member okay then and postcode there all we just need to do is to click on odd there is added it right away i can spot it right there look that is it and it's also added danny boy straight onto my system if we double click there so this is just an overview of my excel data entry form with a search and update function okay guys let us go straight into excel and start a completely new tutorial so i'm going to exit out yes and close all of these now i have a new sheet here that i've never used okay for those of you who might be new to excel development environment using user form the first thing you need to do is you need a data i have a link to this data on youtube anyway just the raw data so that you can practice now what you need to do is to make sure you have your developer tab if you don't have your developer tab right up here in the menu all you need to do is to go to file select options right inside the options come straight to where we have customized ribbon select that 
you need your developer tab you should be able to see it right here if you can't see just search for it here but it's always here anyway once you have the popular command make sure the developer tab is checked and just click on ok there once you click on ok your developer tab should be displayed up there now if your system will be something like this click on developer tab and the next thing you want to do is uh, to select the visual basic menu here click on that okay now the next thing is you see the insert click on the insert and you select user form and this your user form i like you to change the size let's go for the width remove this up so that you can see what i'm about to do and in here i'm going to change my own width to 1044 let's make it okay let's say 44 there and that is my width right there 1044 then the height i'm going to come in here i'm going to change the height to about let's say 780 there now the background is coming here you see where we have the background i'm going to change that background to something a little bit greenish let's say about this yeah that looks a bit darker now we go straight up here make sure your form is selected because you need your toolbox if your toolbox is not there that's it right here just click on toolbox i'm now going to select frame the first frame i'm going to put down here drag another frame and okay i'm going to need one up here and there's going to be one in the middle here else about that those are all the frames i intend to use and these frames i will then change the color let's change the background color of these two so hold on to the control select and go straight to the background here i just want to select something a little bit lighter for the background of those e uh, frames there i'm just gonna pick on that that's good enough for me right and the other thing i will do is just get rid of the text content here you see where we have frame i want to make sure it's selected i'm just gonna try and delete that so that is it right there you see the caption click get rid of that and this as well and the last one here there we go now on this very first frame up there i'm going to add as follows i need four text four labels there so let's go back to my toolbox grab one label drop it there then i also need a text box so i'm just going to enhance those and use them to populate the rest of the frame this label I'm going to change the size of that to 16 bold. I'm not just going to bother change the font type. So the text, the text box, that will be bold 14. There we go. And I'll just populate it. Just use this tool to populate my frame. Hold on to your control, click and drag. Let's keep going and one more here okay and i also need about yeah i need i'm gonna need three somewhere here yeah and i'll need another three here and i'll have a label here somewhere that label i'm gonna call that my let's just copy one label i'll use that for date all right so we need to let's drag this that much let's see yeah all the way
Okay. Now that that is done, let's name all of those components. This one is going to be known as reference number. And this is going to be, okay, let's name this one. Oh, there's no room for that. So let's move all of this here. So that we have enough room for our reference number and the others. Yeah, that's more like it. And the next, oh, this one first. So that should be TXT reference number. So I'm just going to call this TXT ref. one is going to be so, uh, first name so we'll come to the caption change that to first name and the text beside it is going to be txc first name so name Box txt surname. There we go. And this last one that is going to be my address. So let's just drag it some up to there. And this is going to be address. So come right here and change that to address. There we go, guys. So I'm going to repeat the same thing for the rest. And oh, this one. Let's just change this. So I'm going to change this to. Combo box, where's combo box? Yeah, change that to combo box because that's going to be for proof of ID. Yeah, and what else? And these other two here, I'm going to delete those and just copy these across. Okay, I've just speed up the development of this framework and get back to you guys. Okay, so let's speed that up. What I'm just doing is giving them a name. Okay, this is going to be, uh, let's say that is telephone and so on. All right. Okay, I've finished the, just the design of this very first frame there. So this other one here, let's add the list box. So click on the list box and just drag it all the way. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm gonna give it a name and just call it LST display. There we go. Okay, so let's move this down a little bit. Come right down here, move this as well. And I'm gonna add some buttons here anyway, so think I'm going to need about so let's go for seven yeah there's gonna be one here and let's see maybe set to for about 26 I'm gonna make the height 26 right and the width I'm gonna make that maybe yeah let's go for 100 as the width there, I suppose you guys can see that. Let's see, move it up a little bit more. Yeah, about 100. Yeah, that's fine. So, the, the font I'm going to make that 14 bold. And this very first one that is going to be my let's just call that CMD data yeah and the text content on it is going to be add new new so I'm gonna copy this hold on to your control click and drag copy the next one this is going to be print and the name CMD print now I need let's go straight in here where is that where is it yeah there we go my toolbox here you see I need this the spin 
button and drag that and that's going to be about 100 as well 100 and let's make it 26 and see how that's going to look like okay that's my spin button I need a couple of these one here that's going to be update resets let's call that updates here and this very one I'm gonna call that reset then let's have two more one two yeah so okay this one will be delete this will be known as search and one more so with the search I'm gonna have a text here that I just call oh, let's add a text box in here let's copy this come right down here this will be exit I move this here that's beside exit change that to exit right there's going to be a text box let's copy a text box paste it right in here that's going to be my search just beside the search button okay so we can change that let's go for maybe 24 and or 25 okay now here I want to add a label here so that very label let's just copy one of this label copy and dump it right there and i'm going to change the background to yeah green why not there and the text on it i'm going to change that to okay let's change the font size anyway to about 26 and text con uh, text color we change that to yeah that's fine and let's just change the contents while we're here now we'll change that to excel data entry form with search and update function okay let's open that up there we go guys all right that's taken care of now here let's take care of this I'm not going to do anything just yet, but let's come straight to the spreadsheet. You see this very spreadsheet? Okay. I'm going to select from here rule number two. All I just want to do is to give it a name. Select rule number two. Okay. All the way. And I've selected to the last rule that I have in here. Okay just from row number two up to the last row you can also do that here come into format and select manage name but you can also do it here okay so right there I'm just gonna type in records that is the name for these rows that I've selected press enter so I've given it a name so the name is called records okay now if I select it all again let's just select that and come right down here we should be able to see that name there look at that now let's go back to our visual okay now in here make sure this is selected once it's selected come right down here the first thing let's go straight you see where we have i'm going to expand this a little bit you see where we have and close this maybe collapse this a little bit more right now where we have colon count because i have 10 rows here if you count it i have 10 in total right i'm now going to enter column count is 10 allow heading okay column header instead of false i'm going to make that true there okay now you can see my heading is showing now the next thing I want to do is you see where we have column width I'm going to just enter in there 90 
91.6 because of the size of my system so I'm going to say comma or you can also write 91.6 pixels but if you write 91.6 with a semicolon that's fine because I have 10 of those I'm just gonna copy this and just paste it let's copy again and paste so I have delete the last column so I've set the size of each column the only size that I'm going to change will be the column number four which is for the address you will see the reason why now okay that is that done then I'm going to scroll right down you see where we have row you see here row source okay we must enter this very name the name we have in here records see I've just copied that name so I'm gonna go back to my okay now that I'm back in my visual basic development environment you see where we have the row source paste that in there or you can just type it now right above it right above the row source don't ever forget that we have multi select I'm gonna change that to multi select that's it right here there we go you see now like I told you guys earlier on look at the address if I run the program now this is what you guys are gonna see look at that beautiful but look at the address there's not enough room for the address and we still have plenty of rooms here so I'm going to change I'm going to change the address address is number four one two three four select your list box come right down here you see column width one two three four so I want to change that to something maybe hundred and fifty and let's see that there there we go you see hundred and fifty so I'm going to run the program again and let's just see how it's gonna look like you see we can even add maybe five or ten more you see that's fine I like that so let me add let me make it 160 and see what's gonna happen there we go now run it yeah 160 is not bad so we can see the address pretty much so that's it that's fine so all we then need to now do is to start work with some coding so the whole interface development is ready so all we just need to do is add a few lines of code and we get everything rolling now let's start work with the coding so the first one i like to take care of will be the exit let's come right in there end that and i'm going to double click on the exit button and the name of the exit button is c m b exit and before i even do anything let's let's go up here i'm going to enter option explicit there so which means any of the variable that I enter in there is explicit to whoever is using it so there now inside my exit button right here um first of all right underneath here let, let me just declare the following variable I'm going to call the uh, update rule okay let's say as integer right and the next variable I'm going to declare underneath there I'm going to say dim I exit as dialog now I think this one is going to be VB VB message box message box results this is excel vba we're working on all right so right inside my exit button that's the exit button again double click on that i've declared two variables so the first one that i'm going to make use of is the exit one that i've just declared in here so just copy that paste that in here and let's say the variable I exit equals message box message box and the message box I'm just gonna enter confirm if you want to exit in there 
close that up that's my very first argument so the second argument is going to be VB question so go for questioning and let's add another argument let's say VB yes or no that is two we have one two three arguments comma the fourth argument would be let me just call it data data entry form yeah so that'll be the title so now let's come in here and just come right underneath and say i exit equals vb yes so if i exit equals vb yes then this is what i want the system to do unload me there we go there let's just say end if and that is all with the exits so the good thing about this method is just when you click on it the system actually prompt you confirm if you want to exit you see those are the argument VB yes or no and right up here that's the title and that's what I entered in there confirm if you want to exit with the question mark the question mark is right here that is where we have let's open that up and that is where we have VB question so that's taken care of now let's go back here the next one I would like to take care of right away is look at the print that's a very easy one too so double click on the print and right here for the print I'm just going to enter application yep the dialogues open up a bracket and let's select X dialog printer setup X dialog inside this various method there X dialog printer setup yeah I think that's it X dialog dialog printer setup close that dot show so what will happen is when you click on the button this dialog box will show will actually show up now you can then say workbook dot sheets yeah the one with an s and that will be my sheet one yeah that's the one i want the system to print out for me and say comma oh no full stop actually dot print dot print out copies okay enter column equals one and that's all for the print so if i run the print this is what you guys will see let's run the program and you see that click on print there we go okay you can just select whatever you want in there i'm going to cancel that okay let's take care of the add new button so i'm going to exit and let's double click on the add new button the first thing i'm going to do there is i'm going to declare the following variable dim let's just say wks so that will be for worksheet as work let's that's that would be worksheet let's put an s there there now i will also declare another one for the range of data that i would like to add so let's give that a name i'm going to call it add new as range right now the next thing is to set the worksheet when I say the worksheet as sheet one okay when I say sheet one I'm talking of this very sheet here this very one so let's decrease that so that you can see that's it this very sheet here so I'm going to set WK as as sheet number one so minimize that and come right in here and just say WKS this one the WKS is just shutting for worksheet anyway equals as a set we need to set it first equals 
sheet number one there we go now and I want to save add new this very one here add new copy that paste it here and I want to set that against sheet one it's a WKS dot range and that range I'm going to just go all the way I would say about a column a up to 65,356 okay that should do dot and open a bracket and let's select XL up dot offset okay that means when I enter any data just get it offset to the next row all right now add new self dot offset what do I want inside the very first column the very first column is zero comma zero what I'm wanting there is the following value. I'm going to say the value for that is going to be txt reference dot text. So that's the very first one. And I have 10 in total. So I'm just going to copy this and just paste it. All right, copy, paste, paste. So I delete this too. I have 10 in total. So the number here is going to be 1, 2, 3, and so on. We have 8 and 9. So now let's change every single data we have on this. So that's going to be first name. Okay. And the next one is going to be soul name. So let's speed that up as well. Okay, that is it. Taken care of. That is for the odd. Um, let's see. Let's just increase the font so that you guys can have a good look at it. I'm going to make that maybe about 12. Yeah, you should be able to see what I'm up to now. Okay, so that's for print, odd. And right below it is exit there now before I even go any further to be on a safe side let me save this so I'm gonna just call it VBA now let's say Excel underscore search underscore update yeah yeah underscore function so that I know which one I'm dealing with that's good now to save that you see the save type we have to change that to save excel macro enable okay excel macro enable workbook make sure that is selected okay i'm going to save that in my own directory which is on my desktop here so let's save it right in here save there okay that's taken care of okay we can even test it out but the thing is the combo box there's no data on the combo box well that's that's no problem let's test it out uh, yeah let's test it out okay let's come right down here and here so I'm gonna give enter some data in there let's just say um, reference let's say three zero four right and the name is going to be Tony Alan okay and the address is seventy nine and so let's just say seventy nine Afrobeat yeah, Afrobeat. 
road. Okay. And I'm going to come in here, the telephone number I just entered following and right here Afro, Afro Brick Beach Road, let's enter a city there and also a Lagos. Yeah, that's fine. And the date, let's make up a date there, so we call that 30.04.2020. Right here there's nothing, so I'm just going to give him a title there. So let's just say pilot, yeah, pilot. And membership type, we can call him annual member, and he's paying as follows. There, postcode. There we go. All right, as you can see, that's my last record there which is duplicated with this so I'm gonna enter this but when I click on R this is not gonna appear there it will appear on my worksheet here so let's click on add okay I've already entered it in there so I'm going to now exit out so let's just be sure it's there anyway so I've click on that twice yes exit but the problem is it's not here you will see why it's not here now so exit so let's come into my workbook there scroll right down we should be able to see Tony Allen there we go I think I can see Tony Allen look at it that's Tony Allen right there but why don't we have Tony Allen on the on this very sheet here on the list box we don't have Tony Allen there you know why because in the name right here where we have format you see name manager the name manager is only up to rule 45 and Tony Allen happens to be on rule 46 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the role because I'm going to have more so let's just change the whole thing to 60 uh, well I can just make it let's say about 2000 right that's fine oh okay 2000 yeah all right so come here click on save so we have it up to 2000 so if I click on test look at it okay it's going to be all all the way up to 2000 see that it's still going okay so that is that done we can now close this close if you want to save save that now let's go back to our interface design run the program now and if we scroll right down, we should be able to see Tony Allen's details here. Let's take it back up and just scroll gently. That is it, guys. Look at Tony Allen's details, okay? So that is the solution to that. So that's taken care of. Let's take it off, delete, reset, update, and these other ones. So I might have to try and speed up most of this so double click on delete now inside delete i'm going to declare the following so let's say deem as integer i'm going to deem something as integer they copy this and just change the variable name around is that inside delete so the variable name i'm just going to call that i Change that to letter I. Okay. Oh, that's one. Change that to I. Okay, let's use a for loop. For I equals zero to range. So, and the range, um, okay, maybe I should even change it to, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to change it a whole lot to 60 something thousand. Let's make the range 60 something thousand okay so let's say for i equals one two 
65,000 plus. Okay, so instead of 1,000 or 2,000, it can always be 60 something thousand. And N as this as well. Copy all of those, just dump it in there and change this to row. Row minus one. Now, if LST display dot select dot selected I so if I is selected so I'm now talking to the list box if, if I select anything from the list box this is what I want the system to do okay then I want whatever that is selected I want it deleted rule so let's kind of like indent this So we can just say rows i plus one dot select okay and whatever is selected which is we would refer to that as selection dot delete and if and we must next I as well so that is taking care of next I and uh, let's indent this and then this that is that taking care of that's the delete okay okay let's take care of the reset button double click on reset I'm going to have to speed things up because of time now that is the resets. These are the lines of code for the resets. Okay. Now one important thing, if you guys notice when I ran the program the other time, I don't have any data in here. So let's get those sorted. So I'm going to enter those as form initialize. Now, but I need the name of each of them. So let's come right down here. So right here, let's come up here and choose a different, select a different event from initialize. That is it. Let's tap so that you guys can see it. And in here, okay, right in here, the following codes will be included. Now, take a good look at these lines of codes. Let's increase this. Now, this we add the following data straight into the member type. Okay, and this we add the following for the proof of ID. If we come right down here, these lines of codes here we add the following price for the member fees okay why this we just display the time okay right above all of these three components up there now right below it this is the variable I declare right up there called update role this we update the role straight away as soon as we log on because remember the variable the the event we using is initialize form initialize okay so as you can see rule was initialized as 10 so whatever we have will be updated straight away inside each of these when we click on updates or whatever so if I run it now that is what you guys should see they all have data in there okay as soon as I log on to the system run the system it actually initialize straight away okay so as you can see the the data that is initialized in here is actually from here that is the John Davis if you look at it because I said 10 on that very code so what is done is is added the headings one two three 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I should actually change that to two instead of ten. So we can get the very first data here called dynamic hunter. So I'm gonna exit out. Let's go back inside form initialize and scroll right down here. Okay, instead of ten, I'm gonna change that to two. Okay. So we now go run the program, look at that dynamic hunter is there if we change it to whatever let's go back in there if I change it to something like 7 let's see there we're running 7 is Tom Jones let's see Tom Jones there we go to be number 6 here if you count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay let's take it back to two two is logically correct so i'm going to put two in there so that is to do with the form initialize okay save that back in here now let's take care of the spin button and there we go those are the lines of code for the spin button if you look at this code properly, study it, you will see that it is logically correct. Greater than zero, okay, the value of a spin button will be what I have, whatever I have inside C2, okay? And C1 will be equals to A and C2, all right? The same thing applies to the others. You look at this if you look at this this is for the reference number first name surname okay and we have address and so on okay so let's take it down so that you can see the rest of the code so I have to speed this up okay that's it now let's run the program and see how that will work there we go run it yeah you see that that's how the spin button works okay let's have a go at one two i think the delete i'm not going to select anything that will be deleted all right come in here and that okay now let's take care of update double click on the update and right here are the lines of code for the update okay that is quite simple it's not a difficult line of code all we're just doing is updating whatever value we've just entered straight in onto the spreadsheet there we go that's it okay that is not difficult so have a good look at the lines of codes now let's take care of search now these are the lines of code for the search button we'll take a good look at it from here up to here let's go down a little bit I had to speed things up because there's a lot of coding involved there we go up to here take it from the top and bring it down a little bit or maybe just move this up a little bit so you can see everything the way it is maybe indent all of this right here are the lines of code for the search from here down here up to there okay one more thing um the resets if you guys notice the reset i've also included this these lines of code we actually once i click on reset if there's any selection made that will be deselected okay why this one actually clears all of the data 
inside every single text box and this one should be set to play as well let's go back in here you see the list box itself I'm gonna double click on that so on double click that's what I want to use I don't want to use click so I'm going to change this to double click when I double click I want it to be able to select there so let's run it and see so when I double click any any data any row that is double click on will be automatically selected on the spreadsheet itself or the worksheet or workbook so let's run this program so that you guys see it so take a good look at that let me take it up here are the lines of codes I declare the following variables print to bring it down add data take it down one more time delete we have exit here and we have reset from here up to here reset then we have the sesh there's a sesh take it down update you can always push your system to have a look sesh update double click on the list box your spin button and finally initialize the form with the following as a form initialize bring it down initialize again and there that's all there is to it so I'm going to run the program now so that we can call it the end of this project yeah the first thing first that we haven't tried out is the search let's click on that and let's enter 99 or okay let's say 7799 search there we go look at it Danny boys let's check for another data I'm going to go for 2444 that's it Tony Parker uh, maybe one more let's search for 4568 oh okay there's a mistake let's see what's gonna happen that data does not exist okay so that's 4568 there we go dynamic hunter okay that is how the whole system works now the double click for the double click this is how the double clicks works so if I come in here now and I double click on any data let's see what's gonna happen that is gray small double click on gray small that is it grace more is automatically selected on the spreadsheet itself let's check out 14 14 journey there we go 14 2 journey and let's go back down Tony Parker you can see it right there Johnny Davis there or John Davis so that is how the Excel data entry form with search and update function works. So with that guys, I'm gonna call it the end of this tutorial. I suppose you guys enjoyed. You all have a nice day now. Bye for now.